Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and today I'm going to spend a little time with you going over how to assemble some of the more complicated mechs that are out there. Um, and when I say complicated, I mean, you know, some of the heavier ones that are multiple pieces, uh, they don't necessarily glue very easily. Uh, and what we have today to work on, our test subject, is an Atlas AS7K. So this is a 100-ton mech. This is from Iron Wind Metals. Um, and this guy's about, I'm going to say seven or eight pieces, maybe more. When we crack it open, we'll certainly know. Um, and we're going to use any of the tools that we can here to get this together. So hobby putty for sure, uh, maybe some green stuff. Definitely think I'm going to put some magnets on this guy, maybe on the arms, definitely at the torso. Um, you know, the usual suspects, files, knives. We'll go over all the tools in just a second for you. Uh, but this mech really is the last mech. Uh, in my Draconis Combine company that I need to assemble. So I'm real excited to get this done. Uh, and after that, we'll throw up some painting tutorials as well. So don't forget to subscribe. All that good stuff is coming up. Uh, but stay tuned for getting this mech together. All right, so now we're going to go over the tools that you'll need uh, to basically do everything that I do in this tutorial. Um, so first thing, always uh, X-Acto knife. I actually keep a couple of these on hand. The tips tend to break off all the time. Um, so got a couple of these. These are super critical. Uh, good pair of metal snips. All right, any brand will do, uh, just as long as they got some decent cutting strength. Uh, the next thing here, I have a couple of pin vices. So I have a your standard one. Um, and this is very small drill bits. This is what I use for the starter holes, the pilot holes, um, basically to make sure everything's lined up. Um, this is too small for magnets, but uh, it's good if you plan on pinning anything. We're not going to do that in this tutorial, um, but uh, that's what this one's for. Then I have a bigger, uh, basically a bigger hand drill. So this has a full-size chuck on it, and this can hold full-size drill bits. So this is awesome uh, because I have two different drill bit sizes here. I have a quarter inch drill bit and then a one eighth inch drill bit. Uh, both of these fit into this hand drill real nice. And so I have eighth, uh, one eighth and one quarter inch because I have one eighth and one quarter inch magnets. Um, so these are one eighth by one sixteenth. All right, um, there's a stack of them here. And then I have one quarter by one sixteenth. And I also have one quarter by one thirty second. Um, and these we'll use, we might use these uh, if it's a, a tough to get in uh, to get the right depth for the for the full uh, one sixteenth inch ones or uh, we may need a spacer on this mech around the torso so you know we can kind of stack them up. Um, so either way that's what we've got going on here with the magnets. Uh, we're definitely going to use these, uh, and we're going to use these on not only the torso, uh, that's going to be the big ones, but we're going to use these little ones on the arms to magnetize those. All right, so uh, we have fun tack. So this is, you know, something you get at a craft store. It's the kind of thing you hang your poster on the wall with. Uh, this is great. So this is not as strong as green stuff, um, but if you uh, get very tiny amounts of it, and you put a little glue on it, it really sets well. Um, so this is gonna be great for holding some of those bigger parts. Speaking of glue, uh, I use this, it's Bob Smith Industries uh, Cyanoacrylate Instacure. Um, this is a two ounce bottle. They make a extra thick one, but I find that just the standard uh, thickness for gap filling uh, is really good. That, that cures very fast. All right, good set of files. These are essential. I have a whole different uh, array of them. Uh, these have these have been through a war. I've been using these for years, um, and they, they're still going pretty strong. So various sizes, um, you know, and shapes, you know, round and triangular and flat, you know, to get into different corners and things like that. Cool. So this is a, you know, your standard C clamp, right? And so uh, what I'm going to use this for is, or at least I anticipate, is for some of those pieces that. Uh, I'm going to want to hold together for a decent period of time to get a good seal on the glue. You very gently clamp it together, and then you can put it to the side. Um, so this is a great tool to have, and this is a this is like a mini clamp. Um, and I have a whole set of these for a variety of 
modeling projects from mechs to terrain to everything else. So these are great to have on hand. All right, and then uh, this is my standard wet erase marker here. And so when I'm using my magnets, you'll see me mark the sides that I need to glue in. That way, the polarity of the magnets is correct. And when the mech uh, is put back together and actually the magnets are you know facing the right direction so this is good to have. Uh, I use this um, pencil here actually to seat the magnets and sometimes to seat the fun tack in little pools of glue. Um, I'll sometimes use my exacto knife but this is great because you know one pencils are cheap and if it gets glue on the tip you just resharpen it. Um, and also the other great thing is magnets will not stick to this. Um, so when you can seat the magnet with the exacto knife when you want to kind of play with it and line it upright Pencil's great because, again, magnet won't stick to it. And then my utility tools here, paper clip. Uh, so this is great to have on hand because the glue nozzle always gets clogged. It's like invariable. Um, so I always keep one of these around just to kind of clear out the, the tip of the glue because, of course, right when you need it, it always ends up hardening over. So uh, I always keep one of these around. And then, of course, paper towel. You're going to use this to clean off you know, your X-Acto knife or the pencil or whatever. Uh, you get glue on your fingers, whatever it might be. Oh, and lastly, we've got the cutting mat here. Uh, so that is everything from soup to nuts. So now let's get into building this mech. All right, so here we are. We are unpacking this Atlas. So it turns out that this model is actually 13 pieces, uh, upper and lower torsos. You got arms, legs. Uh, it's got the, the SRM side pack another hip mount, a uh, small cannon, both hands are separate. Um, so this is a pretty complicated model, lots of pieces involved. Uh, so I'm using a combination of metal snips and my X-Acto knife to clean these pieces up to get them off the sprues, uh, starting with the legs. Uh, one of the most important things is when you're working on the legs is to file down those feet because you want to make sure that mech stands flat. Legs also have some mold lines on them, which you can kind of see there. We want to make sure we clean those up too. And uh, we're going to clean up in between the toes, use that X-Acto knife. So any place where there's good amounts of detail, you'll typically find flashing on the model. And you're going to want to clean that up real nice, nice there with the files, the X-Acto knife. So pretty much, you know, a good bulk of this, uh, this prep for this model is going to involve those three tools, the files, the knives, and then the clippers as well. So now we're just moving on to clean up that SRM pack on the side. Now the hands were a little bit troublesome, so these are sort of a, a ball joint style. Uh, so the, the hands uh, at the end, they have like a little, you know, a little ball on the end and there's a socket in the arm that the hand would fit into. Uh, but there was lots of flashing, uh, very rough, and so um, that was a bit of a problem to get those cleaned up. And as we'll see later in the tutorial, I end up just hacking those ball joints off. Now the head, we always want to test fit it, make sure everything looks good. We cleaned up a little bit, cleaned up the body as well. Always check for all those little pieces of flashing. Um, and also, uh, drill out the gun barrels. So, you know, there's a couple of barrels on the Atlas there, um, and they get covered over by flashing, or, you know, some of them aren't uh, recessed to begin with. So you can use that very tiny drill. Or here you'll see there's a little bit of flashing right where the upper torso seats into that hip assembly. And so I'm using the hand drill with the uh, the eighth inch drill bit there just to clean out that hole a bit. And because I'm going to magnetize this mech, I'm going to use the back of the X-Acto knife and hack off um, that little nub. And now what I'm doing is just drilling a pilot hole for later so that I know where and when, uh, when I need to drill for the magnet. I can get that nice and centered. Moving on here to clean up more flashing. Um, so you can see those mold lines there. We're going to kind of work on the, on the file to start. You have to be careful with some of these exterior facing pieces, um, especially when they're very uneven. Uh, if you file too hard, too fast, uh, you'll end up you know, taking a bunch of detail off the mech. Um, so even a little bit will go a long way with the file in terms of how much pressure you use. And I'm um, just cleaning up the gun barrels on the arms, drilling those out as well. 
trying to get those holes recessed. That way when you paint the model later and you apply a wash, you know, you'll get that, you'll get that real cool effect, the sort of the, the, the shadow of the, of the gun barrel. Alright, so now we're going to start magnetizing this mech here. So we're going to start by drilling out the, uh, the upper torso. Now if you recall, I, I had started it with a pilot hole and then moved on to the eighth inch drill bit. Now I'm upgrading to that quarter inch drill bit. It's because we're going to use quarter inch magnets. Remember, it does not matter specifically what size magnet you use or what size drill bit you use as long as they match. So we're starting out our holes here and we're just going to keep patiently drilling and this is a this is an exercise in patience for sure uh, as i mentioned in one of the other magnetization tutorials you can use a dremel here uh, i prefer to do it by hand it does take longer uh, but it is more precise it gives you a little bit more control so that you can make fine adjustments in the direction of the drill to make sure that hole is centered uh, because if those magnets are not perfectly lined up uh, what's going to happen is the mech will be off center the torso will be hanging off the legs a little bit to one side so you can see we're almost there um, magnet is seating pretty flush so that's a good sign so now we're just testing here with another magnet just uh, clean it up a little bit with the exacto knife you know sometimes um, again if those holes are not perfectly straight you can you can kind of dig out a little chunk there with the exacto knife or you can just angle the drill a little differently but you can see we got a nice fitment there on the magnet now so we feel pretty good about that so we have our two different size quarter inch magnets we have a one eighth um, i'm sorry a one uh, one quarter by one sixteenth inch and then we have a one quarter by one thirty second inch the one thirty second inch is obviously thinner and that's real good for you know, spacing mechs out or mechs where, you know, there is uh, an issue with clearance. So um, what we're going to do now is start the gluing process. So we snapped our magnets together and we marked opposite sides of those magnets as they're connected. That way we know that when we glue them in, the marked side needs to go in, right? So that the unmarked sides will connect and we know that the polarity is lined up. Everything works out good. We get a little bit of our, of our hobby tack there, our, our fun tack. All right, we're going to put a tiny little ball of that in the uh, in the recessed part of the mech that we drilled out. All right, we, we put the glue in first, mix it around, and then you notice we use the X-Acto knife to just slide that magnet in place. And then we use a pencil to level level it out. You can use your fingers too. Um, this hole was deep enough that I didn't get glue everywhere, so yeah, I got I got my fingers uh, to use on that one. But if there's a lot of glue, the pencil is a great choice for that. So you'll see now, again, magnet is marked. Uh, it's on the exacto knife, ready to go. So we know which side needs to go down. We'll put it down, slide it on, place it with the, the pencil tip there, get it nice and level. If we need to apply a lot of pressure, we can, and that's good to go. Same process with the arms, except on the arms, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the smaller 1 8 inch magnets. So the difference here is in the pull strength, right? The smaller magnets don't hold as much. They're not as strong. Um, and for a heavier metal model, you know, in the torso sections, you're definitely going to want to use the quarter inch. Something like the arms, though, the eighth inch works just great. So we're starting here by cutting the nubs off the torso, and we're starting with our pilot holes. So you can see we have decent pilot holes there. We're putting in our, our eighth inch drill bit holding it nice and straight and you know notice we do a little bit of it at a time there uh, on each side you know make sure those holes look straight test the depth of the magnets see how it looks and after a while you get a pretty good idea of what that needs to look like so we're prepping our fun tack we're going to do the same thing where we get a pair of magnets together we mark them on the smaller ones uh, it's a little harder to see on camera but um, when you're when you're there and you're working on it it's pretty easy to see you can also choose to put a little acrylic paint or something on them uh, if that's easier. But we got a little fun tack going in there, and now we're going to line the magnet up and just slide that on. This one, a little bit of glue leaked out because it's a smaller hole. Uh, you know, it's sometimes hard to get the right amount of glue in there, so just use the paper towel to smear off the excess. 
And notice what we're doing is arm to torso, arm to torso. Make sure that polarity is correct, right? So we have the magnet marked for that particular pair of magnets. Make sure that the right arm uh, magnet is going to the right torso and the left arm is going to the left torso, right? So just wanna make sure you do all of that, you know, measuring and planning before you glue because if those magnets get glued in the wrong way, uh, they are a pain to dig out. It's not impossible. Uh, I have done it, uh, but it's always good to just double check, and that's why I got in the habit of marking these things with the marker uh, because it makes it almost impossible to glue them in the wrong way. Perfect. So we have nice flush fitments, looking real good. We're going to do the same thing on the other arm now. Get a little bit of fun tack in there. Wipe it off, set it with the pencil. Clean off our tools, clean off the glue. So again, these things always tend to harden on me when I need them most. All right, and there we go. So now we're gonna take a look at what we've got going on with the legs. We're gonna try to get this hip assembly put together. Now this is always a pain um, when you have a multi-part mech like this because you can't necessarily lay it on its side. You want to kind of glue it together standing up so you know that it's going to be flush. And you also need the torso on standby um, because you want to make sure the mech isn't like leaning forward or back because the hip assembly, you know, can rotate. So we're going to use you know, fun tack and glue. We're going to make sure that, you know, we get it in there real good. Um, you know, the other important thing to note is I did not... You know, if, if you don't use magnets, do not glue the hips to the torso before you glue the legs to the hip. If the top is extremely heavy, it's going to be almost impossible to glue it together straight. Um, so, and you can see here, what I'm trying to do is, is just clamp it down just to get some seal on the legs, right? And because the glue will be flexible for a little bit. That fun tack gives us a little bit of malleability as we put this guy together. All right, so now you can see I'm sort of posing it, checking it out. Now what I wanna do is very carefully put the top torso on because I wanna make sure that the mech is straight, right? I wanna make sure that like the, you know, it's not leaning back or leaning too far forward or, you know, if I do want it in one of those poses, it's, it's desirable. I'm gonna add some more glue to the bottom, right? And let it set. Um, you know, you wanna try to get glue not only on the inside, but for those heavier things, a little extra around the outside kind of creates a little bit of reinforcement. Now we're just gonna let that dry and put one of the back plates on uh, the rear torso. And so what I'm doing now is I'm scuffing the surface. So when these things come out of, uh, of iron and metals, uh, you know, they're very smooth. Uh, I don't know if they have a release agent on them or not. I, I tend to think they might, um, but I'm not really sure how the casting process works. But I like to scuff it up anyway. Um, it's something you always do with resin models. Um, so if it's a very smooth surface like that, I'll tend to scuff it up with a file just to help it seat and glue. So that's what I'm doing here, just scuffing up these a little bit because again, it's a very small surface area and uh, to, to glue, and so these are very tiny pieces. But these are basically both the uh, sort of hip guards or whatever. One of them has the SRM6 pack in it. Right, so we're just gonna line it up. And one thing that I like to do is I put a little glue on, you know, one side, I touch them together, and, and if I have an issue with them seating, what I'll do is I'll, I'll let them sit and sort of get tacky, I'll let them air dry a little bit, um, just for a few seconds, that kind of increases the, the tack. But what I'm doing now is just putting a little bit of clamp on there to hold those pieces in to help, uh, you know, with that seal, put the mech upside down so there's not, you know, excess pressure or anything on the legs. You don't want the model falling over and it's more stable uh, upside down in this case. And so you can see uh, the, the magnets on the arms now glued so we can get on to working with the hands. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, those ball joints ended up being a problem uh, for me. So I just cut them off. Um, and that way, you know, it gets me the, the sort of angle that I wanted with the hands. I also uh, crushed one of the hands a little bit, so it was a little bit closer to a fist. Um, if you really wanted to get crazy, you could, you know, just exacto knife the fingers a little bit um, to create some more space to close them. But uh, for the time being, I just just left them as they were a little bit a little bit open all right so uh, what I'm doing now again cutting that ball joint off was a little bit of a, of a pain uh, on, on both the arms but 
Once that ball joint was off and cleaned up, it was really easy to glue a little bit of fun tack in there to uh, seal up the, the piece there so that there wasn't too much of a gap. Also gives a little bit more of a, a flat contact surface. So we put that in there and we're done with the hands. So they're set. And there they are. So looking real good. Uh, we've got both the hands glued. And again, you know, courtesy of the fun tack, we have a little bit of adjustability. Uh, so, you know, they're not totally set. Now, uh, checking out the, the torso here, one thing we noticed is that that SRM pack is now blocking the torso from twisting. So I use one of those smaller 132nd inch magnets, just a small enough space to lift that center torso up to clear that launcher. And now what we're going to do is just fun tack the head on. And we're set. All right, guys, welcome back. Here we are at the end of our tutorial. So basically, we fully magnetized and assembled this model. Uh, we did, again, fun tack the head here so that we can pull it off to paint it and get in all the details real well. Uh, we did add an additional sort of spacer magnet there so that the Atlas's torso will clear that LRM-20 launcher on the leg. Um, magnetize the arms. Everything holds real well. Lots of strength on these magnets. Uh, the arms are so long on this Mac. I, I was half tempted to saw the um, the joints down, but I think that would have been a little too much work for what you get. Um, but these these magnets hold pretty well, and so we have a fairly poseable uh, atlas here. Pretty cool. And in fact, the other benefit of fun tacking that head is you can kind of turn it a little bit. So you know, if we want to have him looking where he's shooting type of thing. You know we can do that so there it is I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial I certainly enjoyed doing it don't forget to subscribe for all kinds of cool content battle reports more tutorials just like this rules analyses a whole bunch of great stuff so thanks again from DFA Wargaming and catch you next time